Some of the issues we see in captive snakes are viral infections like respiratory issues and bacterial infections like mouth rot and scale rot. This is most commonly caused by incorrect husbandry. You know, in recent decades, folklore husbandry has perpetuated this kind of simplistic husbandry that doesn't offer the opportunity for overhead lighting and UVB. Now this leaves a lot of snakes without a certain preventative care. Now I want to start the video by actually saying this was one of my essays for my bachelor's degree in animal sciences and it was the highest grade that I've ever achieved. So before anyone says that I'm out here making like these wild claims, you know, I'm not. I would have been pulled up on that if I actually was. So there's anecdotal evidence of snakes recovering a lot better when given UVB. Now this could be the fact that when given UVB they were also put to a new enclosure which had better ventilation, you know, it was cleaner and so there's a lot of factors that could play into this. So in truth, it's probably a combination of factors, but let's just concentrate on what UVB might be doing. I say may because no one has actually directly studied this in snakes, but the reason for this is that you would have to, you know, willingly induce respiratory infections in snakes to test this. And obviously this isn't going to make it out of ethical review, so it's not going to happen. So I can't say this is 100% fact in regards to snakes, but there's a lot of information that we can go off here that makes a lot of sense. UVB is often, you know, disregarded for snakes due to the commonly held belief that snakes can receive all the D3 they need through their diet. You know, this is true, but if you're like me and you feed frozen thawed, then in reality we don't really know where our rodents are coming from, we don't know how those rodents are kept. You know, in all likelihood we might get a good run of feeders that are really packed with D3, but we don't really know, so we're really just we're leaving it up to chance. You know, sure, we could like recognize this and try and put a little bit of D3 powder on every like other meal. But even then, we still don't know how much D3 we're putting into the animal. And actually, we have no idea how much D3 a snake actually needs. So what's really interesting when a reptile basks under UVB is that a hormone in the blood plasma called 25-hydroxyvitamin D raises after being exposed to UVB. This is part of the D3 cycle. I don't know if you're familiar with the D3 cycle, but if you're not, I have a video. It should be at the top right if I'm pointing in the right direction. I've got a video on that. So what's important to us about this 25-hydroxyvitamin D, I said it right this time, <laughs> is the fact that it's measurable. So we can take blood samples and then measure these levels of 25-hydroxyvitamin D. And that is an indication of the vitamin D levels within the animal. Now when this has been studied in snakes, before and after given UVB, the levels of 25-hydroxyvitamin D significantly spike. When this happens, there is a shutoff point which protects them from overproducing. And this protects them against hypervitaminosis. In fancy terms, that basically means they're not going to overdose. What's important to know though, is that this only applies to vitamin D from being subcutaneously synthesised from UVB, not from dietary D3. So, they can cut off the amount of D3 produced from UVB, but dietary D3 is fat soluble. And what this means is that they might already have enough, but if we keep over and over providing it, it stacks and stacks and stacks in the fat until they might actually reach toxic levels of vitamin D. Now how likely that is depends on how much you're giving to the animal, and what animal it is, how old the animal is, the weight of the animal, how much fat is on the animal, there's a lot of variables. And there's a lot of variables to consider when we're thinking about dietary D3. It's important to know that this cutoff point when basking under UVB exists because it puts these studies on UVB before and after into perspective. If there's a cutoff point when the snake reaches optimal levels of vitamin D, then you would argue then, if that snake was being given dietary D3 through its meals, you'd argue then when tested, the UVB would only just top it off, you know, it's already got all the D3 it needs. And that's what the majority of the hobby thinks, their snakes have all the D3 they need. So why then, in the studies, when tested, do the levels spike? Because if they were near already optimal, there wouldn't be such a spike because it would be impossible, there's a cutoff point. Which means the levels in these snakes to begin with before being given UVB were low or even deficient. You know, but how is this possible? I've had snakes for years and they've never shown any signs of being low in vitamin D 
people might say. When we think about it this way, it's estimated that over 1 billion people worldwide are deficient in D3. And these people don't even realise it. They might go their entire life without ever even knowing they were deficient in D3. Yeah, but how does this actually relate to respiratory infections in snakes? Well, hang on, it's coming. Although there's no literature on the effects of optimal vitamin D levels and respiratory infections in snakes, there is sufficient literature in humans. You know, one, one of the positives to this whole COVID-19 situation is that there's now a plethora of studies on the immune system and the, the effects that vitamin D might have on it in relation to respiratory infections. For example, in a study published this year, suboptimal or low 25-hydroxyvitamin D plasma levels were concluded to be an independent risk factor for COVID-19 infection. This was supported by another paper that concluded being deficient in vitamin D was a risk factor for contracting respiratory infections like COVID. In fact, there is a long list of studies published recently due to the COVID-19 epidemic presenting similar findings. Now, please don't think this is exclusive to COVID because it's not. This exact scenario is exactly what happens to us. You know, in the summer when UVI is peak, we're all outside, we're unknowingly synthesizing D3 in our skin, and we have optimal levels. When do people really get colds in the summer? And then when it tapers off and that UVI drops and we head in towards winter and Christmas, our bodies use up all that stored D3. And if we aren't getting enough in our diets, then we do run low on those supplies. And eventually that's why we get way more colds and respiratory infections like flu and stuff in the winter. Because our immune system isn't at like optimal like it is in summer. So although there is anecdotal evidence of people providing UVB to their snakes and then their snakes improving, there's also sufficient literature to suggest this is the case because of vitamin D levels. On top of this, UV is used in sterilisation from, you know, water treatment to sterilisation of medical equipment. Now granted that's UVC, but UVB and UVA do have some properties that are useful they still have some functionality as a bactericide and a viricide. A study on the bactericidal properties of UVB on oral bacteria found an activity level of 30 to 50% on bacteria. So, although UVB does not have the same effect as UVC, it still does have some effect on the reduction of bacterial infections and contributes to a more hygienic enclosure to some degree. You know, granted, providing UV doesn't negate the need to clean. It's never going to replace being able to clean properly, but it's going to contribute towards enclosure hygiene. Therefore, a very strong case can be made in the prevention of respiratory infections by using UVB. You know, this doesn't mean irradiate your snake to the highest UVA possible, but offering the appropriate levels and allowing the snake to move in and out of that is only going to be of a benefit. I will never house a snake without UVB if I can, because the list of benefits is too like vast to ignore. And if you want to learn all about the benefits of UVB and how to choose what bulb to use, then I have a playlist all about that. When you, when you think about all these big breeders on YouTube, they're always uploading like, this snake's ill, you know, this one's got respiratory infections, how to deal with respiratory infections, these tips and tricks. Well, why are they always getting respiratory infections? And you know they don't provide UVB because it's all racking systems. So, yeah, I'm not naming names, but I'm, ju I'm just saying, you know, make of this video what you will. You have to make the best decision for your animals that you possibly can. And, you know, I know what decision I've made. <laughs>